to start. Okay, there we go. Okay, just reading from uh, Hebrews 4 and verse um, verse 12. Right? Uh, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, uh, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay, so the word of God, living, powerful, sharp. So, uh, uh, so many qualities mentioned there, and we um, and we see that uh, you know we have this great treasure that has been given to us, uh, the word of God, and uh, with a purpose, and the purpose being that we uh, refer to it in the sense we make it our reference point. Um, we also make it. Uh, you know something that we that is our constant nourishment uh, everyday nourishment uh, we love the word of god which is living powerful and sharp to um, to renew our thinking renew us to change us from the inside out uh, to strengthen us um, and completely you know give over ourselves to this word uh, so that Whatever we do, you know, it is centered around the Word of God. It is centered when we we live our lives, our choices, our thoughts, everything. You know, if it's around the Word of God, so we can be sure that it's anchored in God, because this is these are His words, these are His thoughts, um, and uh, we are in really in a safe place when we do that, right? And and more so when it comes to our you know, ministering, preaching, teaching, everything. So, yeah. So, just wanted to remind us of that because the word of God is living and powerful and sharp, sharper than any two-edged sword, um, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. Meaning that you know, many times we cannot discern what is of the soul and uh, what is of the spirit. Everything seems so similar, right? Um, so uh, everything seems the same. Like, is it my own emo emotions or is it? something that the holy spirit is uh you know directing me in the spirit uh, it seems so similar but then what will what is the differentiation like what is this something that is sharper um even to the point of dividing between the soul and the spirit it is the word of god right so let's pray and just say god you know i need more of your word i need um, you spirit of god to write your word upon my heart and uh, teach me right I want to live, not just hear your word, but I want to live by your word, do your word, right? Okay, let's pray. Father, we, we just want to thank you for your word. We thank you that uh, your word is life-giving, life-producing. Your word creates, Lord, your word um, Lord, dispels darkness. It illuminates our understanding. Lord, your word drives away everything that is of the darkness. Your word, Lord, uh, quickened by the Spirit is a sword, as a weapon, oh God. And Lord, your word is so powerful. And we choose to, Lord, uh, speak your word. We choose to, Lord, hide your word in our hearts, God. Intentionally give ourselves, O oh God, uh, to your word. Not just read it, but meditate on it, Lord. Confess it and and give place to your word in the first place and the and uh, the preeminent place for your word in our lives, Lord. We choose to do that, God. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, also reminded of uh, Paul's in instruction to Timothy. Um, you know, when he when he says, um, um, you know, First Timothy chapter four, uh, and he says uh, in verse twelve, right? Let no one despise your youth, but be an example, etc. And then verse thirteen, he says, till I give, till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Okay. And then it goes on to verse 15, meditate on these things, you know, think deeply about these things, think about these things over and over again, about what? About uh, reading and exhortation and doctrine. And he says, give yourself entirely to them so that your progress may be evident to all. You know, that's the, um, that's the instruction that 
Paul gives as a seasoned um, you know believer, as a leader, as a mature believer, is is you know someone who's been in ministries, someone who's probably gone through this, experienced this, and he's telling Timothy, you know, give yourself entirely. And your progress will be evident to all, meaning you will, you know, your progress, first of all, you know, you will notice it, but then others cannot miss it. Okay. Uh, so that's the thing, you know, that your progress, others will see it, others will notice it, right? Um, praise God for that. Okay. So today, um, let's continue from where we stopped um, yesterday. Um, just give me a minute. Um, okay. So yesterday we looked at, uh, we just reviewed hermeneutics, right? So the importance of interpreting scripture, we looked at some of the practical aspects of it. We looked at uh, those six practical rules. I think that's where we closed. Um, interpret in light of the context of the passage. Interpret in light of progressive revelation. Okay, and understand that there is progressive revelation, you know, uh, in scripture and, and, and what is, uh, there, prominent in the old dispensation, uh, changes in the new dispensation. So, be aware of that, right? And inter interpret scripture in harmony with other scripture. Uh, maybe there's something that is unclear in a certain passage, uh, some truth that is highlighted there. Uh, it's, it's it doesn't seem to be, uh, you know, it seems unclear. But then look at other portions of scripture which talk about the same thing, and then you build the doctrine on it, uh, not on something that is unclear. Okay. And we also saw, uh, you know, the last two things were, um, I think we didn't go into this. So uh, interpret the spirit of the passage and not the letter. You know, what is it? What is it actually saying? Uh, maybe there's some figure of speech that is used. Maybe that's a um, you know, metaphor or simile or a hyperbole that is used. But you know, what is the spirit? What is the message that is actually being conveyed? What is the heart of the message? And, you know, don't go don't become too literalistic and look at the uh, you know the rather than the um, you know don't go by the letter look at you know what does it say um, what is the spirit of the passage okay then the last one is interpret with dependence upon the holy spirit now this is um, this is something that is very very uh, important um, for us um, just one second please um, um Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So this is something which is very, very um, important because uh, it's a privilege for us, first of all, that we have the author of the scriptures uh, indwelling us. Like we have the one uh, who is uh, who is omnipotent, omniscient, right, uh, and um, you know. He's God, he's eternal, and he indwells us. So therefore, when we interpret scripture, this is one you know often overlooked right aspect of interpretation. like you can we can use our minds, we can use all these um, you know other aspects, but then if we do not depend on the Holy Spirit, we are missing out on a big aspect of interpretation of scripture. So we, uh, because he's the one who is there to guide us into all truth. You know, and maybe we can just look at uh, um, the book of John and the Lord Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, several aspects, right? Um, like he says um, in John chapter 14 and verse, um, yeah, verse 26, right? Okay, uh, let me just put it on the chat. Uh, John 14, 26. Okay. So where he says that uh, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, right? What will he do? He will teach, right? He will teach you all things. And he will also bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So... You know, he's he's a teacher, so which means uh, we can interact, we can uh, we can commune with him, fellowship with him, and he's going to speak to us, and we're going to you know, we can be taught by him, and he will also remind us. Okay, that's something that is beautiful. Okay, then we look at um, chapter uh, so chapter fifteen, verse twenty six, the next chapter. Uh, it says, "But when the Helper, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth." Who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of 
me. So he's going to be doing this work of um, teaching. He's going to be doing the work of testifying, you know, pointing to Jesus, giving proof and added evidence that this is of Jesus. This is, you know, this is Jesus himself. Uh, he will testify of me. So he, so that's another aspect of interpretation that he's going to teach. He's going to, you know, depending on the Holy Spirit, uh, he was testifying. Then uh, the next chapter, chapter 16, and if you go down to verse 13, right? What does it say? It says that um, when he, the spirit of um, truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. And uh, he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. So here's his teaching, here's his testifying. Let me put the other references also, John uh, 15, 26, right? And then we look at, uh, Oops, um, John 16, and verse 13, 13, 14, verse 13, 14. All right, so we, we see all that. So we see that uh, he will guide, he will he will teach, he will testify, um, and, and also, uh, yeah, he's going to do all that. So, so this is a very important aspect. You know, we have the Holy Spirit who's uh, alive, who's living and indwelling, and he, will teach us, uh, he will uh, help us understand. And uh, it's a very important aspect of interpretation, right? So um, when we depend on the Holy Spirit, you know, the interpretation comes to light. There is the Spirit anointed revelation that comes. It's not going to contradict you know, any other aspect of scripture. It's going to be in line, the Word and the Spirit agree so you know we are going to be in safe place now why are we looking at it? why are we you know saying that interpretation and everything is is so Im very important because right believing leads to faith conviction leads to right living right and right living leads to the destiny right, that god has for us so believing living uh, right living results in you know, a change of destiny right so therefore um, Paul again says right he says rightly divide the word of God so that's an important aspect right um, so so also you know but the thing is when we don't rightly divide the word the word of God um, we uh, when we when we you know when we become teachers and we want to teach the word of God and we're not rightly dividing the word of God we're taking a whole lot of people, you know, along with us um, onto a different, uh, you know, you know, uh, this causes a lot of damage uh, to the body of Christ, right? So, so therefore, you know, give weightage to that, uh, rightly divide the word of God. So we don't have to be, right? We don't have to be, right? Uh, fearful. We don't have to be paranoid uh, about this. We can walk in humility. We can walk with dependence of the Holy Spirit, being fully confident that. Yeah, he's with us and he will teach us. This is what he's promised to do. So just being teachable, being humble and receiving from him. And that's, we are in a safe place, right? Okay, um, well, let's move on to chapter two, okay? So this is uh, introduction to homiletics. Um, maybe I'll just share the notes also. Uh, feel free to open up, uh, you know, what you have. Okay. So some uh, words, some definitions, uh, you know, how, because it's, uh, when we come look at biblical preaching, um, it's called homiletics. Okay, homiletics. So what is it called? So this word homily, it means a discourse, a conversation, a talk. Uh, the word homos, it means a saying. Okay. And homilos means uh, an assembly or a gathering or a crowd. Okay. So the Augustine, one of the church fathers, uh, he's the one who is believed to have introduced these terms like homilia and sermo uh, into the language uh, uh, of the church, like of the Latin church. So from which we get these words preaching and sermon and so on. Right. So um, he is believed to have introduced these words to the church. So homiletics is the, well, you could say the science of preaching and also the art of preaching. 
okay it refers to uh, the preparation uh, putting together the delivery and the communication of the uh, homily or the discourse right so or the or the homos or the saying so um well it there's some science to it in the sense you know well it's a practical wisdom okay you know communicating this truth so might as well put it in a way that people understand right might as well put it in a way that people are able to receive um, put it in a way that people are able to retain it um, because you know the value of the truth that you're communicating so put it, putting it in a way that people are able to receive it understand it and receive uh, not just receive it but also retain it which means they remember it and they get to uh, do it or live it out okay so 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 all that uh, comes into play when we say okay this is the the art of putting it together okay so like we said yesterday um, you know the the realm of uh, the message being communi communicated you know by for each of us uh, for example, not all of us could need to be in a kind of a formal pulpit ministry, right? Not all of us uh, may be called to that. But, you know, there could be several different ways by which we could be communicating this message, okay? For example, it could just be a one-on-one -on -one communication, okay? You're having a conversation with a friend, and uh, or, or someone an acquaintance or maybe it's a it's a group but then it's just a conversation and in the course of the conversation um well there is this need to present the truth right so there isn't the need to present the message so of course it will differ it will not be a very formal thing it will not involve uh, you know the uh maybe it's it's very different from a from a from being speaking from a podium okay so it's just a regular informal conversation and in the duke in the, in the course of the conversation this is being shared so there could be you know a setting like that or it could be a kind of a formal semi-formal kind of a setting where maybe it's a life group maybe it's a you know group that is gathering for a bible study and uh, you know there also there is the communication of the of the truth so um so we see that also in scripture and we see those words also used. Okay, so for example, just going through some, uh, uh, you know, some resources, and it says that um, there are actually thirty-three Greek words, okay, uh, which are used in the New Testament, translated as preaching or proclaiming. Okay, just think about that. Thirty-three Greek words. Okay, now, uh, and so you know, several, some of these words give a different setting in which we actually speak it okay uh, like setting like this where we uh, for example the first one okay what we see in colossians 316 okay um let's i'll just put the reference here colossians 3 verse 16 okay um so colossians 316 says um let me just read it out it says um let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So he's saying that the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So this, so it, it says, you know, teaching and admonition. So two different words are used. Um, and it says, it particularly means, uh, the first word teaching it just means instruction. Okay, so instructing someone. And the second word, admonition, it means, uh, it's a, a stronger word. You're giving life-changing. It, it, it could involve a uh, warning. But you're giving a life-changing, life-transforming advice or a counsel. Okay, so these two words are used there. So it's done in an informal setting. It, it refers to an in, informal setting where you're, you know, you're teaching, admonishing, instructing, giving life-changing counsel, which carries a little bit of weightage, but but it's all there, right? Then the other setting that we see is um, uh, it's slightly, you know, let's look at the other end of the extreme, right? Uh, where we see Peter giving a, a message. We see Stephen addressing, or we see Paul addressing 
um, these so these are like formal settings people are gathered and they're watching even though it could be something like a you know it's not very hostile kind of a gathering but still you know the, if you if you read through the 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 message uh, sermon that stephen you know you see he just recounts everything right from the old testament right from uh, from exodus and everything right you see it's a very very logical very um uh, clear set uh, message very you know uh, in fact he chronicles the entire uh, the thing right the exodus and everything so we we see that okay or there could be in between where it's a like we said it could be a you know a semi-formal kind of a setting where it's a group that is gathered um so nevertheless in each of these settings we see that there is uh you know preaching or some uh if you want to use the word communicating of the truth that is there okay so so when we when we look at that, we need to understand that um, some basics about communication, right? So that will also that will really help us to understand um, because it it involves communicating. You know, like you have someone there and you're communication communicating this truth. So uh, understanding a little bit of the foundations or the basics of communication is. Uh, will really help us will really strengthen you know, that whole process so let's look at that okay let's look at uh, communication okay first thing when we see communication there is a sender okay, and a, and then we have a receiver okay so there is a sender which means there is a person who's communicating there is a receiver you know it could be multiple uh, it could be plural it could be you know just a singular uh, person but they are receiving the communication and then the third aspect of uh, the communication is the message itself the message that is being communicated right so we have those three basic things in communication the sender the receiver and the message now there could be a fourth aspect which is the medium of communication so we have the sender we have the receiver, we have the message itself, and there could be another fourth aspect in communication or fourth element in communication, which is the medium. Now, in preaching, of course, we we are assuming that it's it's the uh, is it's preaching, it's it's verbal, but it need not be so, right? So we looked at different settings in which we are communicating the message. So let's say that we look at the second setting where it's a formal informal kind of a setting. Now, if you throw in media. Okay, if you throw in technology, um, add technology there, we see that there are several ways by which we do it, you know, electronically. Uh, maybe it's an email, maybe it's a blog, maybe it's a website, maybe it's, uh, you know, something else. So, so uh, some, some of the social media, like, um, so there also we see that, you know, there is communication that's happening. Okay, and so we need to, in today, you know, today's um, time and season, we need to, factor that also now, that's a very important factor uh, when it comes which can actually break or make communication very effective but it can distort communication also okay okay so um, at any of these levels communication can break down okay so maybe you're a sender so if you're not effectively sending the message um, then you know there is uh, breakdown in communication. I don't know if you played the game Chinese Whispers, right? So everybody sits around and then somebody starts, somebody whispers something, some message, and you're supposed to pass it on to the next person, pass it on to the next person and so on. By the, by the time it reaches the last person, uh, well, if somebody actually intentionally changed the message, you know, and it's all faithfully passed on, the end of the, you know, the end of the message is totally different from how it was passed on. And I saw another variation of it, probably you have also on, uh, it was, you know, a video that was being passed on where it was not a message, but it was an action, right? Uh, you've seen that? Yeah. Okay. So the person actually turns around, the first person turns around, does an action. Everybody's facing this direction. You know, probably if we're in in-person class, we could have tried that. You know, you're all facing one direction, right? And then the first person turns around and does an action and turns back. 
So the second person, only the one person has seen it. So the second person turns to the third person, does that action and turns back. Okay, so and so on. So this action is passed on. Now the thing is, how I perceive that action is totally, totally different. Okay, this in this video that I saw, it was about a person starting a bike. Okay, so this person does the throttle and does the kick of the bike, and then he, you know, just goes like that, he's riding the bike. But by the time the end, you know, because each person is perceiving it a little differently and also passing on that message a little differently. So by the time it goes, it, it almost looks like a dance. That person is doing something like that. And uh, it's, 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 you know, it's completely, totally different. Okay. So you understand, you know, you begin to give weightage. Hey, as a sender of a message, as a person who's, or in other words, communicator of the message, I need to be clear, right? I need to make sure that the message is sent in a certain, in the in a way that the receiver receives it. Now, all these different complexities are there. What are those? Language, uh, their own perceptions, their own mood for that particular day, the, the lack of attention. So many challenges are there. But in the midst of all that, I need to make sure that I'm communicating the message in articulating that message in a clear way simple way uh, without losing the importance or you know without compromising on the truth of the message so that that person receives well now add to that you have the medium you have the message itself right am i uh, adulterating it am i compromising it am i watering it down what is the message right so all these things are there when it comes to communication okay uh, and like i said you know we have the medium itself so the medium itself sometimes is a message okay for example you know um you, you, uh, just think about this okay let's say you have a ad advertisement for a very costly jewelry okay advertisement now um you know it's a premium jewelry and it's a premium brand of jewelry. Now, the medium that you use in order to promote that message or advertise that is, is going to uh, make or break that promotion. Okay. For example, okay, it's a very costly brand of jewelry. And if you're going to use some kind of a you know very uh, cheap paper, paper insert. Now, people are not going to really consider that, right? Or if you put some, you know, table in front of that uh, showroom and some sales promotions happening, people are not going to consider that, right? Because it's a it's a very premium, expensive piece of, you know, jewelry ornament. So it has to be in a medium that really communicates that message well. Okay, yeah. So that's very important. So medium also plays a very important role uh, in the net. Sometimes, you know, people have said the medium itself is the message. The medium that you use itself is the message. So, you know, we have all this, right? Um, the, so we have the audience and the uh, message and the speaker and, uh, and so on. Okay, let's look at the second thing. The so, second thing that we, uh, we, we need to understand is that the communication process begins in the mind of the speaker. Like, um, in in our case, okay, we can say when it comes to preaching, we are we are praying, we are receiving, um, the, and uh, you know the Lord uh, gives us the message. We are inspired, and then we we receive the message, we receive the revelation, and it begins with the with the sender, right, sender of the message, and then uh, different means are used by the sender. So this is what we looked at. What we said was medium, different means. Okay, is it spoken? Is it written? Uh, is it something that is texted, typed? Uh, is it electronic? Is it a video? Is it a, is it a picture? You know, all these different ways and means by which we communicate that message. Okay, so um, sometimes you don't need to use words, right? Actions. Uh, maybe that's it's a dance. Maybe it's a picture, which really communicates a powerful truth. Sometimes. Right, without the use of words, okay. Um, fine. So then, let, let's look at the fourth one. Okay, there are several. There could be several barriers to communication. 
Okay. Well, what is it? First, firstly, I mean, it could be the the language itself. Okay. If um, if you don't know the language, you could be speaking a different language. Then the receiver is is unable to you know decipher it is unable to receive it well you could be most articulate you could be speaking in a wonderful way but then the person probably understands very basic you know a minimal basic understanding of the language then it's it's not going to uh, be effective right i remember one meeting where where we had um, here in bangalore india um, so we uh, so that was the first session okay first session where it was a three day meeting and the first session that and uh, after worship and uh, I, I was asked to speak, and then so we just asked the audience, okay, does everyone understand English? You know, is everyone okay, comfortable? So these were, you know, several pastors from uh, from various other places, um, some from rural, some from urban. You know, so we asked, and, they, and everybody kind of said okay. You know, they just nodded, said yes, yes. So we went ahead. Uh, Forty-five minute session, and uh, you know, somewhere right. Uh, the middle, I just felt that hey, this is they're not responding, right? It's not uh, the response that you normally get for some of these things that we are presenting. These are exciting. This is, uh, you know, what is happening? They're not really responding. But then uh, uh, we realized after at the end of this, we said, uh, you know, did you really understand? Uh, you know. And there were some challenges, you know, people were there who, who had a working knowledge of English in the sense, very, very basic uh, knowledge of the language. But then, and what we are sharing, you know, from the word, we're reading from the word, all in a different language. So they needed translations. So the second session, here's a translator. You could, you could visually see the difference in the audience. You could see the difference. You know, they were, you know, more engaging, more interested. Uh, more attentive, just one thing, the language, right? So, um, so within language itself, we see that there could be different levels, you know, based on the audience. Now, you could have an audience which is very, very well learned, very intellectual, highly intellectual, or you could have, uh, you know, different age, you know, you could have kids, you could have, um, you know, people who are very senior, people. So within the uh, audience itself, you have so many differences. So we need to be mindful of that. Okay. So that's a um, that's a thing. You know, when I use a language, when I use um, you know illustrations, maybe or the kind of language that I use uh, within a you know, even though it could be a language that people know, um, but the way in which I use it, well, the illustrations which I use. If it doesn't make sense, if you're not able to relate to it, then you're not able to receive the message, right? Okay. So sometimes it could be uh, it could be something tech uh, technical, like right? if I'm using a, a microphone, or it could be something like that. Where, whereas you know level of volume, okay, level of volume. If it's too loud, people don't you know people shut off. You know it's like it's grating on your mind. You know it's like too loud it's almost at the point of pain and you don't want to you just want to get away from it you, know, you just if it's too soft right you are straining to listen you're straining to hear okay what is it I, I didn't get that and 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 if it's going to be let's say a long session and if you're battling this constantly you will lose the train of thought right and you don't want to you're just waiting for it to get over and you're, you're like, OK, whatever. And nowadays, anyway, since you have your phone, you can just very well be scrolling through your phone and just waiting for the session to get over. right? But you can have the most wonderful message as a, you as a speaker. You're saying, OK, this is what God wants me to convey to you. And it's a timely thing in season. You better listen. But everything is lost out because of you know, uh, maybe this is the level of volume, the level of sound. right? Um, OK, what's the other thing? It could be. Um, you know something with the because of that environment. Maybe there is noise. Uh, maybe there's some hammering. There's some construction happening. And I remember one uh, one wedding which we went to. I think uh, yeah, uh, like John Paul and I, we were at a wedding, and um, and th this wedding it was it is a beautiful setting, but it ha it was actually in a place where there's a lot of uh, you know outdoor activity. Like they had this huge. Uh, 
catapult like spring like thing where people will be launched out and uh, you know all those kind of things there was a boating there's a wonderful lake but there were people were boating you know in in the boat and then this wedding was happening right there um and so every now and then you know it's this solemn moment in the wedding service and uh, and suddenly there's some loud cheering because the other group is just launched two guys onto you know in the air and then there's a loud cheering and then yeah we're, we're standing there and then the couple is about to make their vows to each other and you know uh, and they're actually they're there right in front of the lake and um, and behind you know this, this scene you know they're photo photo bombing because they want to they're curious they want to see what's happening so they're just coming in their boats and uh, you know things like that right so just it could be a formal setting also where there could be noise so these are things that to take into consideration right so it could be noise lack of light or preparation poor delivery well that's that's something on the part of the speaker poor pre preparation so if as a speaker if we are not prepared and we are constantly pausing guessing what should i say what should i not say that interferes with the communication process and also poor delivery okay now you know these are things that we're going to look at uh, when we look at the practical aspect of um, uh, of communicating the message of speaking the message right uh, of preaching actually so we're going to look at that okay so these are some something so for us to it, it's important for us to understand that there could be barriers to communication and it could be something very simple it could be something very major that's happening but we need to be mindful of that and we need to be uh, you know we need to adapt some things we can't change some things we, we you know we cannot really control but we need to be able to innovate improvise as we go along uh, so that the message is communicated well uh, effectively right um, okay the next one any any questions here any doubts or anything that you might want to add to this um, has there been a barrier to my communication so far <laughs> okay Okay, I mean, these are these are basic, you know, simple uh, things, some very practical things that we should be mindful of, right? Um, and so it will help for us, um, for us to know these things um, so that we can avoid some of these things, some of these barriers. Okay, next one is also uh, human perception. Okay, so we need to understand that, you know, uh, it's, it's like somebody, uh, I remember, um uh, it's it's very very subjective right I, I remember sitting in one church service and i'm like uh, completely you know i just moved and i'm just full teary eyed and um, so i turned to the person next to me and said wow that was uh, oh that was uh, that really spoke to me that uh, then he was like uh, what really spoke to you <laughs> he was totally you know um he was totally i don't know oblivious to all that was happening probably his mind was somewhere maybe he had a difficult day whatever so then you realize that hey the same message coming to this group of people and each one uh, maybe is it's very subjective in the way they receive it in the way they perceive it okay so that's another challenge um, but there's something that you can control some things that you cannot okay so john paul is saying intonations okay yeah we'll we'll come to that john intonations meaning your yeah you know the the kind of um, voice you use and how you use your voice right uh, is it the same or do you go up and come down <laughs> okay the, the intonation uh, of your voice um, and the way you speak so that that really matters i think i've shared i don't know if i've shared with this group but then i remember once i spoke um at uh, on sunday morning sunday sermon and then um the one person who came to me and said pastor i have a feedback i hope you don't mind i said yeah no problem i don't mind then i said pastor when you the way you speak uh you same tone and uh, i feel very sleepy <laughs> so he was actually a voice trainer and uh, he said i feel very sleepy pastor you've got good content but the way you speak you know there's no change in your you know in, in the tone of your voice right and they said uh, i feel very sleepy when you do that so yeah so when you see your congregation nodding off when you see your audience 
uh, just closing their eyes you know you need to change your tone of voice you know you need to alternate um, uh, especially be expressive you know not i'm not I'm not saying that you need to be sound sounding so artificial that it's not like you anymore right but it can be just expressive like when us when there are some things that you're sharing which is which you need to be excited about some sound excited when there are some things that you're sharing which uh, which are which is serious stuff right uh, be serious like let the tone of your voice uh, reflect that communicate that so yeah very important point uh, john thanks for sharing that intonations yeah so i have first hand experience of <laughs> receiving a feedback on intonations okay okay so effective communication communicators are always mindful of the response uh, of others meaning the response of the audience okay always mindful of that so you see that um uh, how is the audience responding okay now the thing is you know sometimes you know, we need to go ahead share the message irrespective of how the audience is perceiving it okay for example okay maybe the you're sharing the gospel and people are you know don't seem to be interested in it okay so for that don't stop sharing the gospel in the sense okay okay today i'm not going to share about this let me just share something you know encouraging and something that is uh, uh, inspiring and leave it at that no you know you plan you pray and uh, this is a group which needs the gospel share it but as a communicator you think about it okay this audience is not receiving this so can i you know can i do it in a different way can i share some illustration can i how can i grab their interest right how can i grab their interest level and and share this right um like i remember uh, the, uh, john was again <laughs> was also there and uh, we were at a wedding right we were at a wedding ceremony the thing is the the bride and the groom were uh, were christian believers but their families were not okay so families were had no clue um, you know about a gathering about a church service and 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 the thing is it wasn't in a church setting the wedding was in a hall it was in a hotel uh, it was a party hall right a gather, it was a common you know regular place where all you know regular things happen gatherings happen meals happen parties happen so it was in such a setting and so now both these families are there now you know you and i know that when a ceremony a church a wedding service is happening like you say, see you sit and you pay attention you listen to what's happening like right? now if there is a unchurched gathering they're not going to do that and they're going to be speaking they're going to be having their conversation okay something's happening some ritual is happening uh, but uh, you know let it happen i'm going to be and and typically you know some some of these weddings are like that right if you go to um, go and attend some of these weddings from you know different other world views and uh, other faith you see that there's something happening there people are talking here fellowshipping gathering and cracking jokes or something's happening there you know, that didn't happen and at one point okay maybe there's some focus but then again everybody is you know okay there's a group of people going to eat and they're coming back and everything is you know it's all buzzing it's all happening different things are happening right so this wedding was something like that and then uh, i realized that hey we need to do something we need to do something like a... so immediately i can't be like a preacher mode i had to be like a game host <laughs> you know like a game show kind of a mode and uh, you know saying okay everyone you know and uh, it was i don't know i just i felt a very different doing that but i had to do it you know okay uh, here's the groom's family and okay can you all you know something i don't i don't even remember the details of it but i remember that it was not a typical pastor preacher kind of a more act to you know shift to a like a tv game show host <laughs> so i don't want to do that i hope i don't, don't do too much of that but then we had to do that right why because people this was the audience right had to improvise had to go make changes uh and um, and you know share the thing and then i remember at the end of it the person said, the person who said hey this is this is a tough crowd right i said yeah yeah brother it was 
<laughs> so anyway, we did that. So the thing is, you know, it was also a you know, wedding solemn, solemn solemnity of the wedding had to be maintained and all that. So to be able to share that. Anyway, so you are mindful of the response. Okay, mindful of the response, not so much you can change, not so that you change the message, you know, completely, but you want to preach it in an effective way. Right. So you're reading the room, you're seeing, okay, why, why, why is this happening? Are they interested? Why are, why is the lack of interest? Is something bothering them? You address it, right? Okay. The other thing, the more you know about the other person's life orientations, the more accurate your predictions about their responses. So what does that mean? That means you know your audience, you know, not all of us have the privilege of knowing the audience. Okay, meaning uh, we may not be able, you know, maybe we may not have the opportunity to interact beforehand, or we the or those who maybe invite you. We're talking about a formal setting kind of a thing. Invite you may not, you know, share much about the audience. So you you have some information, but you don't know, right? Um, but the thing is, if you make it, uh, uh, make an attempt to find out uh, the maybe the age maybe the background um, that will also help help in terms of um, you know communicating in a better way right um, you know sometimes you know uh, you know you need to know because let's say there are children and the children are your primary audience now you really need to work you know at getting the children's attention like um, like for me, that, that is a challenge, right? I've tried, and I'm not really gifted in, you know, uh, ministering to children, speaking to children. There are others, and I'm really awe of, uh, you know, those who can do that, like minister to children. Um, so, so that's the thing, you know, knowing the audience, knowing the life orientations also, meaning, okay, what is the season of life they are in? Um, what could be something, some challenges that they could be facing? Right, and knowing this, and even praying through this, you know, when you're preparing, you can even pray and ask the Lord, Lord, what is the thing, some of the things that they're going through? You know, uh, are they like single families? Are they, you know, broken families? Uh, what are some of those things that they're going through? You know, can you just show me? Can you tell me so that I can be prepared? Right. Okay, so we'll, we we have a few more things, but we'll pick it up in our next class. Okay, uh, and then we'll come to the end of this um, chapter. Right. Okay. So um, we'll stop here. We'll meet again on uh, Tuesday. Um, thank you. Have a great weekend. God bless. See you. Bye-bye.